Hey, this is Glenn. Welcome to another episode of Difficult Questions. This one, why can't we eat cats? And is that racist? So this past month, Haitian immigrants were accused of eating animals and people were outraged and used that as a, as a political point. But at the same time, other people were outraged and called the accusers racist. And the whole thing just reminded me of a Monty Python sketch in the 70s. She's a witch. She's, they're accusing someone of being, in a wit, being a witch because this is, you need to burn her. And they're just really uh, distracted with the point. They, this person need, needed to be punished. And that's what the whole eating cats and dogs thing reminded me of. We're going to use any kind of accusation going against the social norm to bring about disgust, to accuse these people and make them unpopular, right? And there are some people in this country that are really distracted with immigrants. And so Haitians being an immigrant, immigrants are the problem because they bring other social norms that aren't our social norms and disgusting, they're eating pets. And, and so we need to do something about it. You know, they care about immigration, but they're going to use this this accusation as a launching point. And J.D. Vance backed that up and said, I'll do whatever I need to, to, to highlight immigration. And people were obviously critical of, of criticizing Haitians. And through the whole month, we kind of got to this point of there were some people making some some beautiful music using Trump's speech terms. They're eating our dogs. They're eating our cats. And I think we finally landed back at the mocking Monty Python stance. For me, we kind of came back to our senses a bit. And this really, I wanted to talk about it, but I didn't know what to say. And I think the conclusion I came to is we have, the past 10 years, have had this movement to have this kind of forced sensitivity. And we're seeing a backlash to that forced sensitivity. I belong to a storytelling community in Los Angeles. And one of the, the big things for some of the groups is, okay, this isn't the 90s. You can't do 90s humor anymore. And I think it's that that irreverence that that can, is no longer accepted. It's not funny anymore. Um, we're forcing sensitivity. And I can kind of see one side of it, and I can also see the ridiculousness of the other side of it. I was young in the 90s. So I remember the irreverence well. And it was kind of like the embracing of the, the Monty Python, George Carlin, 70s and early 80s, that, that irreverence. You're going to talk about things that you shouldn't talk about and you're just going to hit it with a hammer. And uh, I remember in college, so this was undergrad, 1996 or so, I had a world religions professor. He was Chinese. And he was talking about difference in cultures. And he said, there's a joke, there's a Chinese joke that the Chinese will eat everything with four legs except the table. He probably would not be able to tell that joke today. Even though he was Chinese and he was irreverently making fun of these social norms of, in the US, we deem cats and dogs as pets Therefore, you can't eat pets. That's a European affluence thing. Talk about privilege. You know, poor countries, you eat what you can. Meat is meat. Uh, but we have the opportunity to say, no, you can't do that. But you can't even talk about that stuff anymore. Because, again, it's this 
this forced sensitivity. And, and I grew up as the sensitive kid, right? I, I saw the wrongs in the world and, and I was a feminist and I was um, for the cause. And, and I had some friends, some good friends that you would consider conservative. And I think they just don't have a sensitivity to others. It's rough. And they kind of disregard people they don't know. They don't, they have no compassion. <laughs> but you can't put compassion into them. That's not how it works. You either have it or you don't. And many people are going to be different. I always, I, I've been thinking about the idea that we want the right diversity because as long as you have people that look different with maybe some different backgrounds, but have the same life view, that's the right diversity. We want that diversity. But if you have people with different life views about what women should be doing or what you should be eating or what you should be learning in, in school or what sexuality is acceptable, right? All of these different life views. If you have a differing one from the ones that want diversity, that's, <laughs> it's not the right diversity. So I think that it's this, this backlash of forced sensitivity that this, this eating the cats has brought out in me. And I, I want to talk about that because I don't know what you can do about it. Um, people are going to be ridiculous. People are going to be sensitive. People are going to be insensitive. I work a lot trying to solve homelessness across the U.S. And it's amazing to me that people won't laugh at, let's say, a gender joke, but they'll laugh at a poverty joke. They'll laugh at the homeless because there's no advocate that's been loud enough to say, hey, that's not funny. Poverty is not funny. And it's kind of this, this choosing of what is appropriate and what is not. And I think that we're going to get to that. We're getting to that point of, no, these words, these concepts, we're going to talk about them. I know you decided that it's not funny, but I'm not you. Back to my friends, the only thing that I could do after butting heads with them for so long is just walk away because they had different life views. I had one guy that he was kind of the what, what we'd call today a racist. He's not a racist, though. He's not someone that says white supremacy or whatever, but he has no sensitivity for, for races. And he'd make dumb jokes about rap all the time. I love hip hop. I love rap. Uh, I, I just dig it. And he would always do these stupid jokes about how rap wasn't music. Because again, this is the 80s and 90s where rap was a new thing. And I would call, I'd say, do you not like, at the time, do you not like black people? And he said, no, I love black people, but this is dumb music. And then he'd do these stupid jokes. And after a while, you know, hey, all right, look, I like hip hop, you don't. After a while, you just can't hang out with those people and they're going to make fun of what they're going to make fun of. And uh, I found myself trying not to make fun of anything, trying not to laugh at anything and anyone. And then I just became an insufferable jerk. I'm nothing's ever funny because I'm worried about being sensitive. And I just realized, well, you can't do that because <laughs> then you can never laugh. And now what I've seen in the media is we are insensitive about insensitive people. And that's okay. But you're still being a jerk. You're being a jerk to an insensitive person. And this idea of racism, this idea of, again, someone else is calling people out about eating cats. You're calling people out for being a racist. When they're not maybe necessarily a racist, they're just distracted with immigration and they're being ridiculous. What is race? You know, that my whole idea out of podcast, race is racist. We're talking about national. We're talking about a people from Haiti. That's a, that's a nation, 
So it's nationalist, I guess. And I felt sorry for Haiti because, I mean, Mother Nature, other governments, their own people have been out for Haitian people. And now they, some of them get a chance to have a new life in a more stable country. And now people are giving them hell for being Haitian. Uh, when I was listening to all about the, the, the eating cats and dogs uproar, there was an immigrant from Jamaica and he was saying, well, they do because of voodoo. Some do sacrifice cats and dogs. And so it is a real thing. And I just thought, well, someone, we can't talk about that because then all of a sudden you become a racist. But at the same time, I would never judge that. That's religion. Or don't we have freedom of religion? What is sacred? So I have sensitivity towards getting hit by cars because I've been hit by cars many times. Drivers have no sensitivity. They want forgiveness for hitting people with their cars because they need their cars. And everyone was up in arms about RFK Jr. beheading this whale, which apparently oh, you can't you can't take a whale carcass from the beach. That's illegal. But there, at the same time, there was a picture of a black guy, a uh, reported Haitian, with a goose in his hands. And they're, that the whole thing, you know, they're eating the dogs, they're eating cats, they're taking the geese from the, the ponds. Well, it turned out someone hit that goose with a car. And even though if you want to hunt geese, you can, you have to get a license, unless you hit them with a car, then it's an accident and you can do whatever you want with the goose, with the meat. And this guy was just probably, he, they said he was getting it out of the road. They didn't know what he was going to do with it afterwards, if he was going to cook it and eat it. And, but it just struck me as funny is we're sensitive to things. You can't take this whale carcass from the beach. You can't kill a goose without a, uh, a permit unless you use a car. And then, because we, we need cars so much and we love our cars so much, it's fair game. If you hit it with a car, same with people, it's fair game. It's not a crime. So that's my sensitivity. But that's also ridiculous to everyone who loves cars. So where do we force this sensitivity? I know people, pet people, who are absolutely disgusted by the thought of hurting cats or dogs because they love their fluffy or whatever. Other people, I'm not a cat or a dog or a pet person. Life is life. I, I, don't, I know life is chaos. I get hit by dr distracted drivers. Wh who am I to say what's right? I'm just, I, I call myself a, a, an NPC in my own life. You know, I'm an, a non-player character that just gets mowed down. So I don't know. What is the sensitivity? Who is racist? What is racist? Is it nationalist? Is eating the cats a big thing? Is eating the dogs a big thing? Is calling people out for problems with immigration or not problems with immigration a big thing? I don't know. This is an unanswered and difficult question. Thanks for listening.